Hey. Yeah. I like it. It this is episode ninety-eight? Ninety-nine. Damn it. Why am I always one? Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a weird tick. And it's weird, too, because sometimes you get it right on, and because I enjoy you being off by one, I'm a little disappointed those days. Well, good news, bud. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Well, episode 99, if I don't remember the next one. You're right. <laughs> episode 99 of Alex and Jim. Analyze uh, Billy Joel lyrics. That is what we do. We're not qualified to talk about the music very much. No, and and sometimes we try, and it even I even sound stupid to me. Yeah, I'll say yeah. a thing and I'll <laughs> go. That's probably wrong. That can't be right. It's <laughs> not. Yeah. So, BillyJoel.com is a fascinating place. <laughs> no doubt. Good merch. Yeah, weird though because like I bought so I bought something from Billy Joel dot com and it took a while to get there because they you know i think he puts it in the mail <laughs> I, think, I think that's how it works <laughs> i think he shuffles downstairs at his place licks an envelope puts it in yeah talks to the mailman for way too long yeah so <clears throat> it's an odd little place and because i bought one thing Man, they think I'm going to buy a lot more stuff. <laughs> well, in fairness, if not you, who? Yeah, and I might. You might. But they also have a weird thing. Do you want to make a purchase for something that's not currently available that will be? Yeah. Do you want to pre-order? Yeah. No. I don't. And also... How would I pre-order uh, turnstiles? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, hasn't it been available for forty-five years? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going back in time. The weirdest, most banal use of a time machine. I'm going <laughs> to go back in time so I can order turnstiles. If you <laughs> if you went back in time, you could probably get it for like a dollar eighty. That's true. Need something. Well, maybe that would be worth it then. Might be worth it. <laughs> all the, on all the quantum energy that I would have had to create to get there. But probably, it probably, probably more than the twelve dollars it would cost you. Yes. Well, uh, in daydream land, by the way, when I'm like thinking, what if I had a time machine? Which is a dumb thing to think, but sometimes we think these things. Sure. I'm always like, oh, I go buy Spider-Man number one. That's what I've thought. Yeah. Because that's a, that's an investment. That's an investment. Make some investments. Right. Visit some events, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Here's a my time travel question that I always end up. It's, I start with speculative stuff like that. And then I go, wait, would I go forward or back? You give one shot at the machine. Do you go forward or back? Because back, you already know everything that happened. Right. So do you want to see? Or would you rather not know and go back? Is it comfortable? Do you stay home or do you explore? Oh, that's a va that's a good question. There's no financial incentive. You can't invest, I guess. Well, you could. Yeah. You could see what's paying off in 20 years. Oh, and yeah, you could... Do that and then come back to the now. Yeah. And buy some Bitcoins or whatever is yeah. working in the future. Come back to now and go, oh, money's gone. Mm, that sucks. Yeah. I should just have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Come back to this. I'm going to invest in water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to uh, squirrel away some water and uh, get a Bitcoin. Now, here's a weird thing. There are some physicists actual guys who do science who say that traveling back in time could be possible but for it isn't for some stupid reason huh and i guess the reason is because 
it's not there yet. That's a good reason. Yeah. It makes sense. But here's the other thing about traveling in time. If you think about going in the future, then give up the idea of free will if you could. Right. Because if it's been, then it's been writ. Right. If you can't change it, no butterfly effect. Yeah. Well, I always thought, well, always is a strong word. I've sometimes thought that if you could change time, it would only be because you already did. And you wouldn't really be changing it. Right. You'd be, you You were, you were going to do that, that little chunk of whatever. Right. I am looking at texts because people are texting me. Look, it's fine. We're fine. Oh, yeah. We haven't gotten to the meat of it. But here's the other thing that's amazing about com. Some of the songs have comments. Right. And Captain Jack has two comments. Same guy. Which is pretty typical for any song there. There's like one or two comments. Yeah. But yeah. it's the same guy. Same guy twice commented on Captain Jack. What did he have to say? The first comment makes perfect sense and it's reasonable. He said, I like this song more than a lot of people. I wish Billy would pull it out of retirement and play it in concert. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Very fair. The second one, he he says, you could change the words to sit at home and contemplate. <laughs> Make it more radio friendly. Oh. Okay, that's borderline. First of all, that's borderline what we do on this show, which is yeah. give unsolicited advice to a multi-platinum American legend. Yes. But uh, then he goes, what do you think? <laughs> Sound off in the comments of this other website? Does he think Billy Joel's right? Wow. What What do you think, Billy Joel? Will you change the words to this 50-year-old song for the radio that doesn't exist anymore? Yeah. And also, what if he did that and it turned out the radio, the radio, goes, ah, finally, we have been waiting to play Captain Jack on mainstream radio for so long you needed a fucking 50 year old dirge yeah suddenly it's a huge hit <laughs> you know what makes me laugh about that is the only captain jack is live right it's always the live version that you yeah. hear and when you listen to it and he says masturbate the crowd goes wild so i think like you don't change the crowd noise uh, you re-record it with Contemplate. Right. <laughs> yeah, the audience going crazy at the idea of contemplation. Right. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, self-reflection. That's the shit. Oh, oh yeah, that's what we're going to do later, man. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. So, in the same song, he, like, finds his father's corpse in a swimming pool. You're okay with that? <laughs> Commenter. Yeah, change uh, corp, find your self pleasure. Yeah, or he's just keeps making suggestions like that. Say it's you found your father's hat in the swimming pool. We just found your father's hat in the, in the swimming, swimming pool. So it's still a little sad because that was your father's hat. He lost his hat. Yeah, yeah. There's still <laughs> no crowd reaction to worry about. <laughs> There's still wow. some pathos there. Ah, oh, I bet yeah. you love that fucking hat. Also, a better mystery, because we're you found his hat in the swimming pool, but where is he? Yeah, where's Pop? Yeah. He, Wherever he is, he's hatless. He's hatless out there somewhere. <laughs> Unacceptable. Uh, oh, man. I, uh, I got my A1C back, by the way. A little health news. I got my A1C. Do you know what an A1C is? I have an idea. It's uh, something to do with glucose. It's a a uh, number you keep track of when you have diabetes or you're trying to avoid diabetes. Right. It's, uh, and when you're in the sixes, it's not great. 
no. six and higher is not a good thing. That's right. Like, like for example, a six six. <laughs> yeah, is that where you're saying? That? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Um, but here's what's funny about it. Well, first, what's funny, I will just say that I liked I liked life better when I didn't know what an A1C was. Yes, that's fair. And that is like kind of like what getting older is, is learning things like fucking A1Cs. Yes. Which, Amen. Just keeping an eye on a bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, but the 6-6 six, six was the number that scared me enough that I've made radical changes. Oh, really? Yeah, I've not been eating any carbs or sugar or whatever, and I feel great. How long has that been going on? I've managed to do it for about a week and a half to two weeks. Nice. And you feel great. I do. And it's funny because I, t I tell somebody this story one time. Years ago, I had this annoying thing that would happen in stand-up, and it would drive me crazy. And it would be Friday night, I would crush just yeah. have an amazing set. And then another Friday night would come or another Saturday or whatever. And my energy was all fucked and I was shaky and I was like, I don't understand what's going on. And I would just eat it. Yeah. And it would happen like that, like every other fucking week. And it would drive me crazy because I would get up. I'd be the funniest man in the room handshakes and conversations and like, ah, oh, this guy's a goddamn genius. And then the next week we're like, oh, uh, who let the open mic her up? It would be that. Right. And then at one point I had to quit drinking Cokes. <laughs> yeah. And it was because of the early A1C early. when it was high fives. Right. And who doesn't like a high five? Who doesn't love a high five? <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, so... I, and then I didn't notice it, but I just, when it came to stand up, became consistent and great. Just could always deliver, got better road work and blah, blah, blah. And then one night, set a show, and they didn't have what I would have enjoyed drinking. They didn't have like a plain cranberry juice and they didn't have iced tea. So I was like, wow, the Coke. I haven't had a Coke in a while. Had a Coke, fucking ate it. And I realized it was the fucking sugar. Yeah. Were you crashing? It was, yeah, my, more than likely what was happening is I had spiked and it was dropping like a stone. Wow. Well, this is like that all over again, but not as intense. It's more like, oh, I guess I could just feel okay. <laughs> right. Okay. That's nice. So, Yeah. It's been good, and the, for some reason, the 6.6 .6 bothered me enough that I was like, ah, I better change something, because I just thought, I don't really want to have to take shots. Yeah. And I don't really want to take the damn pills, because the pills come with their own side effects. Yeah, that's the other thing you learn when you get older. Like, oh, there's no free pills. Nope. Fix one thing, but they'll fuck up something else. Yes. Yeah, the only one that's always good is Vicodin. That's the only one. Yeah, yeah. No no negative. There's not no a negative one thing. Press. Huh? No negative press. Nope. Nope. Just feel awesome. Yeah. So it doesn't do anything to your kidneys. <laughs> nope. Your liver is great forever. Oh. Yeah, your people are like, man, you're, you got like a super liver. It's a Vicodin. <laughs> Vicodin, baby. Vicodin. Uh Yellow eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I read a story about a doctor who is not house, but a uh, in real life doctor who liked Vicodin. And <laughs> he realized he liked Vicodin too much. The, the, the moment for him was when he had ruined his stomach with Vicodin. And so he lost his lunch, as they say. And he realized he was on the ground picking the pills out. Oh. And that was his bottom. I was like, that's a pretty good bottom. Good bottom. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Lord, that's a pretty goddamn good bottom. Oh. But I will say with the diabetes, I've got 25 new minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Side effects they don't tell you about. Yeah. 
And I love all my diabetes material. I really do. Relatable. Yeah. Sure, people woo at a lot of that stuff. Woo! <laughs> I'm 7.1. Oh, a friend of mine. So I told a friend of mine who also has diabetes, and he's fat. So, and he knows this. I'm not saying telling tales out of school. But I was mentioning, I was like, my diabetes is... Uh, all the way up to a six point, my, my A1C is up to a 6.6. .6, and he goes, 6.6. Ah, 6. Call me one is a 7.8. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to. I know. And I was like, I like that he's bragging. He's like, oh, you think yours is bad. Oh, man. It's You're like an that amateur. Scene, that scene from Jaws where they're comparing scars. Oh, yeah. With A1Cs. <laughs> Oh, nothing. Look at this. Yeah. Double so danger. this this little song we're gonna talk about. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about a song. <laughs> is uh, everybody has a dream? And you said something a couple episodes to get ago that I think it's true. And I've obsessed about it a little bit. So I think I'm hearing this song, and I don't mind. But it's interesting. I'm hearing the song different than I might have. Yeah, I heard, and I, you know how reliable memory is, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I had heard, the song appears on The Stranger, yes? Yes. 1977, mm -hmm. I believe was originally supposed to be included in Cold Spring Harbor. Ah. 1971, um, for whatever reason, was not, went into the vault and uh, reappeared. In 77 to fill out the stranger lp this could all be false but that's what I remember yeah but do you remember the other thing you said about the yeah. stranger the album tell me you said that you had heard hello that's tinkerbell oh hey tank isn't she sweet she's very sweet you had heard he would this was an album that coincided with a suicidal phase Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the song The Stranger was written about his suicide attempt. Yeah. Hold on one Great. second. I have to do something really quick. Amori, would you take Tinkerbell outside so she can pee? Thank you. It's cool. Anyway, Tinkerbell has to go potty and that cannot wait. <laughs> but I got somebody to do it. Yeah, I had heard that, that this album coincided with him uh, struggling with depression and uh, suicidal ideation. Yeah. So in hearing this song, but then that kind of puts the kibosh on it if it was written earlier. Ah, he's probably always thought about suicide. Yeah, I would think so. He's probably thinking about it tonight. Yeah. It's funny. You're like, well, during this album, he was thinking about suicide. Also during the other ones. Yeah. So... It's not usually something that you think about for th the three months you're making an album. Yeah. Yeah, not nobody does, nobody thinks about it once. Yeah. Well, well unless you're really good at it. Yeah, that's true. There's somebody who thought about it once and they fucking nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> Delivered on it. Um, I will say I do not love this song. I do also do not love it. I don't hate it. I feel like it feels tentative. Yeah. It is Another, a gospel song. It is. Yeah. We should say that it is done in the style of a gospel song. And I would say, to be clear, a black gospel song. Yep. And a real gospel song. Mm -hmm. But it feels like he's holding back, which uh, gospel is very famously never holds back. Yeah. And. Yeah, it seems, I think you nailed it, because part of it was like, this just sounds real fakey to me in the beginning, too. Like, he's trying too hard on some of the phrasing uh -huh. to be soulful, but you're, you know, it might be that thing where, you know, where you're, where you're dancing, and then you see yourself in the mirror, and you go, ah. Yeah, yeah, I got to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, and I think you become self-aware that, like, 
this I want this to be me, but this is not me. Right. That's not a good look for me. Yeah. I, myself. Yeah, it is feels very halfway. Yeah. And it's over the top gospel. It's just plain. There's no, oh, we're misinterpreting it. No, this is a fucking gospel song. For sure. Very clearly an attempt. Yeah. But also the subject matter isn't that gospel-y, except for the title line. Yeah. Um, but it's like a smaller theme. Yeah. I got to say, though, that I generally like. Sure. Just because I like. Well, like, remember, I said one of the things I liked about River of Dreams was in River of Dreams, he goes, one of the lines is, God knows I'm not a spiritual man. I like that line. Yeah. Because I find it to be funny. And I think right. that was intentionally. But just who he is, if he's going to sing a, go a song about God, at some point he's going to go. Yeah, it's, there's probably not a God. <laughs> yeah. And I sort of like get that same sort of vibe here, like this, like reaching for for something gospel, but really something very small is just kind of interesting. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think he hits it out of the park here. I don't think he nails it. It's an interesting attempt. I think it doesn't work. Yeah. And I think, you know, once we're in the lyrics, we'll probably see why. Yeah. Musically, it's fine. It's, you know, he always writes a good melody. Yep. Um, just doesn't sync up with what he's trying to do. Yeah. It doesn't sync up with the lyrics. It's like, oh, close. Yeah. Isn't quite there on it. No, it isn't. It really isn't. It's... It it also reminds me a little bit of, oh, Baby Grand in the sense that, like, and, and in Baby Grand, it's stark because Ray Charles is also there. Right. Where you go, boy, I love who you are. This isn't who you are. Right. You know, this is, and I, I love that you want it to be. <laughs> I love that you want to be this guy, but... Yeah, and even in Baby Grand, it works a little bit because I think being alongside Ray Charles made him really kind of go for it. Yeah, and it, well, it gives you permission, right? Yeah. You because, gotta well, take up your space. Yeah, because the guy's way. right there, so no one's gonna say, who are you two? Yeah, but I'm with Ray Charles. I'm his yeah. friend. So I get to belt. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, all those... Something, something in minor keys. Yeah. I looked at those lyrics again, by the way, and I was like, eh, this, those still aren't great lyrics. They're just so, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, you tell me what the analogy is going to be before you tell me the analogy is what that whole song is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty uh, crystal clear. But, uh, but let's dive into this. And I will say, uh, I will describe the shape of this as, <laughs> Virtually shapeless. Yeah, pretty shapeless. No breaks. It's just a lump of words. A word lump. 197 word lump. That could be a B-52 song. <laughs> right? Word, word lump. <laughs> word lump, baby. Word yes. lump, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're start out. It's or it's an organ, right? It's an organ, another problem, I think. Yeah. The right instrument for the genre, but not for him, I think. Not for him. For him. While in these days of quiet desperation, as I wander through the world in which I live, it's an interesting phrase, because we all live in that one. Yeah, I don't know where else you'd go. I, <laughs> I search everywhere for some new inspiration, but it's more than cold reality can give. I like that. That's all right. It's very stark. Yeah. It's it's unpleasant in a yeah. in a good way, but the lyrics are better than the song, I will say that. Yes, I agree with that. Which is usually not true. 
<laughs> Usually not true. Well, in these days of quiet desperation, as I wander through the world in which I live, I search everywhere from some new inspiration, but it's more than cold reality can give. I think those those four lines are actually pretty great lyrically. Yes. Are They're a know? super bummer. They're a super bummer. Uh, I don't know if he's ever started with while. Yeah. Good. Like starting, really starting in the middle. Um, yeah, I mean, as I'm reading these, I'm like, is this from Nylon Curtain? <laughs> uh, it could be of... Nylon Curtain. It could be the note you wrote. It's a bummer. <laughs> it is a bummer. <laughs> and a, and, a, and a, I love a good bummer as far as lyrics go. So I kind of, I give it... Major credit as far as the first four. We'll see what happens later. Yep. We'll see. Okay, here I go. If I need a cause for celebration or a comfort I can use to ease my mind, I rely on my imagination and I dream of an imaginary time. Well, that's, Less the same thing. Huh? that's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Those last two lines are the same. Um, it's, it seems like a very convoluted way to say what he's saying. Yeah. Like, oh, if I, if I need to feel good, I use my imagination. Yeah, I did it faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, uh, you should write that in the comment section. <laughs> did it faster. What do you think? <laughs> I dream of an imaginary time. It's, uh, it's such a weak line. It just is. And the first four were strong, but that's yep. your rewrite happens there if you were going to rewrite it. You fix that because the start's good. You just draw a circle around those four lines. Yeah. And then yeah. it goes into this chorus. And I do not love the chorus. No. It's so then it kind of goes. So it all, I, I think it's meant to sound like gospel the whole time. But yeah. the chorus doesn't. No. You know what the chorus sounds like? It sounds like if somebody wrote a musical about a famous uh, gospel singer. <laughs> you were yeah. depicting their life, and this is how they imagined the gospel song. It's thin. It's very white. Yeah. Everybody has a dream. God, it's not good. And this yep. is my dream, my own. Yeah. Just to be at home and to be all alone with you. And to me, this is a giant mis misstep to have it be include anybody else. Yeah. And because is now that his, is that what he's imagining? That uh, this lady is with him. I'm presuming a lady. Yeah. Maybe it's his cat. Yeah. But he's dreaming that he just be in his house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would think the gospel, the chorus of a gospel song is something lofty and aspirational. Usually yeah. a dream for humanity beyond yourself even. And his big gospel dream is to have a night in. Eh. I mean, at least if he doesn't have this person yet, then he's aspiring to something. Yeah. Even like just to sit in your fucking shitty apartment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's just standing on the bow of a ship with you or something. Yeah, he's just shy of saying his fantasy is that, and we get takeout. Yeah, Netflix and chill is <laughs> my gospel fantasy. Ooh. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, it's like, not good. It's not good. It's it's funny. It's tantalizingly close to good because of the first four lines. You know, you. You're very right because the first four lines, if it had, if it had either a stayed kind of vague about the unpleasantness or went big, but instead just kind of 
soaked into this tiny little idea of just hanging out. It's almost like he wrote those four lines, the first four lines, and it was like, oh, fuck, this is great. I'm on a roll. And then, like, the phone rang, and he was <laughs> on the phone with his mom for an hour or something. And then he was like, oh, fuck, okay, let me go back to my song. I lost it. Yeah. Uh, just finish it. I got these four lines, yeah. We've all done that with jokes. We're like, oh, we're killing it, writing a chunk. Got four good lines. And then you make it eight minutes longer, and the rest of the eight minutes is terrible. It's absolute trash. Yeah. But I got to keep it. Oh, Lord. Is it... Two years later, you cut it down to just the four lines. And everyone's like, this is great. Why wasn't it this? Yeah. Like, oh, I really wanted the rest to work. <laughs> nope, don't work. No. All right, I think it's you. If I believe all the words I'm saying, and if a word from you can bring a better day, barf. Yeah. All I have are those games that I've been playing to keep my hope from crumbling away. Not good. Man, the song really takes a shit after the first four. It really does. <laughs> it really does. If I believe in all the words I'm saying, is it fine? First half of a sentence. Yeah. Word from you can bring a better day. Stinks. Yep. He does um, imagination and imaginary time, and then he does words I'm saying and a word. Yeah. Yeah, to keep my hope from crumbling away. Girl. Yeah. This is why she doesn't want to sit in your house. Yeah, this is, this very much is very, well, the poetry of a high school girl is what this is. Up. Uh, or guy. Or guy. <laughs> or, you know, undetermined. Yeah. So let me lie and let me go on sleeping. And I will lose myself in palaces of sand. What? Ooh, man, you did. You did lose yourself in a palace of sand somewhere. I, I think there's better lyrics in there. You can dig, dig them out. And all the fantasies that I've been keeping will make the empty hours easier to stand. Sand stand. I uh, did it. Yeah. A, B, A, B. Ooh, so let me lie. Oh, man, I'm just, uh, lose myself. So let me lie and lie and let me go on sleeping. <laughs> I will lose myself in palaces of sand. Look, I'm almost happy to see palaces of sand because at least it's a swing. Well, that was, it was, what's jarring about it to me is that it is a swing, but you. Yeah, nothing else is. And that's yeah, it's problematic in that you you do you don't do not deserve palaces of sand in the song. <laughs> you didn't earn your palaces. And all the fantasy that I've been keeping will make the empty hours easier to stand. And well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, although it just reiterates the other thing you said before: imagination and imaginary. Oof. Yeah. It, well, he, he's bookended the song with, with well, first four very good lines. Legit. Well, in days by desperation. Or, and perfectly. Oh, it is. Do you remember, Paul, what he, how he used to describe the lineup for a sketch show? No. He would say, when you're deciding what order to put the sketches in, you're making a shit sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have the good bread, you know, and something nice and what you do your best. But in the middle is the stuff you just were filling time and you're making your shit sandwich. And my God, this song is a shit sandwich. Uh, yeah. Without, it's only got one piece of bread though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a shit torta. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know that everybody has a dream. Everybody has a dream. And this is my dream, my own. 
just to be at home and to be all alone with you. Yeah. I uh, bet if you were having dinner with Billy Joel and uh oh by the way, I bet his fucking A1C is like a fucking eight. Oh yeah. Billy Joel's got an impressively good high A1C, I'm sure of it. Um but I bet if you had dinner and you were talking about his music and telling him songs you liked, if you found a polite way to bring up that you don't like this song, he'd go, oh, yeah, I don't like that song either. Yeah, oh, for sure. He might bring it up first. <laughs> and, you know, and it makes sense to me, by the way, now that this would be a song that was supposed to be on another album, but ended up on this album when... He was like, ah, I need one more song for this album. Yep. Oh, yeah, man. Where was that turd? <laughs> yeah. Old Spring Harbor. It may not have even re-recorded anything. It just might have been. Even when you're listening to The Stranger, it jumps out as like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. It's on here. It, and The Stranger is such a good album. Yeah. It's this is it's almost like that's how it got there. I think he had like it's like, oh, I got like five hits on this album. Easy. Yeah. You know, just fill it out. I'm not gonna kill myself. Because there's no way six songs are going on the radio anyway. Yeah. Just spackle over this gap. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. It is uh, uh I think we're in agreement. This is not a good song. It's not a good song. No, I mean, I'm trying to think of something to like about it. It's just not there. No, it's, I don't, again, I don't hate it in, like, it doesn't make me mad that it exists. It's fine. It's not so bad, but Lord, there's not a lot to, like, recommend it. Lord. Yeah. This, this is so very much a song that I'm like, well, of course, we didn't talk about this before. <laughs> we did the right thing. Yeah. The, yeah. This, it's going to be around, yeah, 99 episodes feels like the right time to go. Okay. <laughs> okay, here it is. Um. Well. Yeah, it ain't good. Yeah, I don't think uh, we had any uh, epiphanies. No. I thought there was a chance, because I didn't remember hearing it before, and I thought, eh, maybe I'll like it. So I at least learned something. Yeah, there you go. You learned you were right before. Yeah. If the character in this song uh, should never have a time machine. Oh, for sure. So like, the oh, let's go back to the 1700s and uh, hang out at my place. Yeah. He uh he shouldn't have included the dream of a girl. That's it. That that'd be the fix for the name song. Cause even an unclear, like, is it a dream? Does he already have a girl and he just yeah. wants to stay home? It, there's no like image of the girl. Who is she? What is she about? Yeah. Everyone has a dream. What's her dream? Clearly, it's not hanging out on your futon. Yeah. Yeah, she's literally just a, a you. That's the entire description of her is you, right? I think it's crazy to have a song called Everybody Has a Dream and then to just talk about yours and yeah. to just talk about the most boring one. <laughs> Come oh. on. Just call yeah. it I Have a Dream or I Have an Idea. <laughs> it's not yeah. even a dream. I have a pitch. <laughs> why don't you come over yeah 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 it ain't good it ain't good it's short um there is a dude i listened to a lot who was a a guy who played guitar in bars in chicago named pat mccurdy i probably mentioned him before he also had a gospel song that he did and it was called i'm going to hell and it was about all the reasons that he was going to go to hell but he like did it up and recorded it with a chorus and it was spot on gospel, but the opposite. That's great. That's how you do it. If you're going to go at it, 
Yeah. You've got to be big to fill up a gospel song. Yeah, and that's a point of view, too. That's obviously satirical. Or... Yeah, it's crystal clear what's happening. Yeah. And this song, it's just not. Yeah, no. No, it's, it's yeah, it reminds me of any time you hear, like, a great song by a great artist covered by a mediocre one. Yeah. And you're always yeah. bummed. Yeah, you're like, oh, he can't do the best part of this song. Yeah. So why did he cover it? Yeah. Yeah. Him just clocking in, I, uh, uh, fine. That's got to be it. It just has to be. Yeah. It I respect that. Yeah, I do too, for real. Like if this was, oh, fuck that. Oh, that's due today. That's what this song should be called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's called The Dog Ate My Song. <laughs> <laughs> I would enjoy The Dog Ate My Song. Lord, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a fan, um, but I'm a fan of Billy Joel, and that's just insane how silly the song is. Do we forgive him? Oh, of course. Okay. In fact, we wouldn't expect anything but the occasional stinker. Absolutely. I Followed by Wicked his. Brilliance. Yes, which every time. Yep. All up to and including the new one. Oh, yeah. And you right. think about how many albums when you first started buying albums and yeah. weren't discerning and you were like, I like that song, so I will buy an album that has 10 songs on it. Surely I'll like most of them. Surely I won't find out that I like that song. Right. Surely they didn't do two good songs to make me buy eight shitty ones. Yeah, well, who would do such a thing? Be cruel. Oh, I'll tell you who would do that. Laura Branigan. That's who would do that. <laughs> wow. Left field swing at Laura Branigan. I liked her fine, but those albums are not good. Check out uh, Buy a Hall & Oates album sometime. <laughs> Three bangers and then... Seven full mysteries. Full trash. Trash. Experiments. Fucking, you could tell they were fighting that day or Good. what. Just, yeah, fascinating. But gar hot, hot garbage. Yeah, you think to yourself, I want a quarter of my money back. <laughs> At least just, oh, yeah. Proprietor. <laughs> This clue comes to us from Mary Jo. Oh. Because I couldn't think of one. And I was struggling to think, you know, because it's so very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we were chatting and she had a couple ideas that I didn't think were great, but she was playing, which was nice. We were, and then hit on this clue, which I think is easy. Hmm. It's probably from The Godfather. It is. Which is a movie which is filled with... Uh, Italians. Well, yes. An Italian restaurant? Is that our Italian well, restaurant? I would say that all movies are filled with... Uh, actors. Who are per playing in individual pieces of the movie, which are... Oh, scenes in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> yeah, the scenes in an Italian restaurant. Ah, that's great. You know, the whole time we've been talking, I thought that was a scene from Heat. Oh, no. So in uh, my brain, I'm trying to think of songs with Heat. It's raining like crazy here. Yeah, that is that is The Godfather, and that's that's one of the seminal scenes in an Italian restaurant. Fantastic. Do you remember that scene? Uh, you know, it's been so long. I've not watched The Godfather in 20 years. This is the, his turn, because what he does in the scene is he agrees he's going to go shoot the bad mob boss. Uh -huh. And everybody's like, oh, you're going to kill somebody, really? And he they hide a gun in the toilet, which I like that imagery, so that he has this plan. He waits for the train to go by, and that's the moment he becomes a killer. Nice. Yeah. That Luca Brazzi? 
Yes. And that guy there, he doesn't know what's coming. No. He's about to get shot in the head. Wow. They also do that thing where they make the death not clean. It's unpleasant because he gets shot in the neck first and goes, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. So they rem he reminds you. It's great directing because he doesn't make shooting how it often is in movies clean and banal and funny. It's just like you get the horror of it. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking great. Great move, for, especially for like a, this guy's first kill. Yeah. Oh. I had this I idea for a screenplay I never wrote, and I probably never will, but it's a... Uh, I had an idea for a, a Western uh, where it's called uh, One Bullet. And a guy shoots another guy because he had fantasized about the West because he's from back East and he comes out West. Uh, and he gets in a gunfight and he shoots this guy. But the guy doesn't die right away. It takes weeks from an okay. infection. And he ends up, because of where they are, they're alone together. He ends up having to kind of nurse the guy towards his death and gets to know him then. Oh, that's very nice. And then towards the end, he goes, oh, just be ready. I have a brother. And you know, oh. He's going to get shot. Yeah. It's a good idea, right? Good idea. If I was the kind of guy who followed through, shit. <laughs> start doing a little bit in your stand-up yeah <laughs> build it out yep yeah. you'll get four good lines and then the rest will be shit <laughs> yeah exactly the rest will be about some lady for some reason buddy you didn't need the lady you didn't need the lady cut the lady you know, nice yeah, I will write that because it would be such a good character piece for two male yeah. actors who are really up their own ass about how good they are. Yeah, and you can shoot it for next to nothing. Right. Yeah, and they'd feel so good about themselves because look what we did. Pretty good. And that's the way you need to go into screenplays is, is just hating the imaginary actors you're casting. <laughs> yeah. Pretentious dicks. <laughs> oh, yeah, I go into work every day. I'm so mad by the time I get to work. <laughs> I leave the house feeling pretty good. I get on the train and start having imaginary fights with people. <laughs> and I have a 45 minute train ride to get to work. So by the time I'm there, I'm like, where the fuck is Reese? I want to talk to Reese. And he doesn't know what happened. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. Shit, he said in my brain. Yeah, I think the only thing he did was have it wrong was have a shorter commute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, hey, bud. Trivia. You remember, Billy Joel was in a band called the Hassles. Yeah. Before he went solo. So in 1967, the Hassles actually charted a song. It went to 100, number 112 on the Billboard charts. Name that tune. Okay. Uh, Remember. No. I oh. like it though. I um I think I'm thinking of oh, a song. Hassle song? It, I think I'm remembering the song he played on, but that was probably before the hassles. Remember uh, that other bit of trivia? Remember, walk it in the sand. Remember, it's garbage. Ah. Great. It, it's even too stupid for a 50s song. It's one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it has seagulls in it, as if I'm remembering right, it has seagull effects. Oh, no, it's a so he, his lifelong obsession with sound effects. Yeah, so a young Billy Joel was like, yes, always that. <laughs> um, he does have an uh, alternate trivia question. What is his other song that has seagulls in it? Oh, would that be the Down Easter Alexa? Yeah. Oh, good. I got the alternate. Yeah, you got the alternate. Uh, you got one. me humming. Huh? You got me humming is the Hassles song. You got me humming. I so bet it's good. no good. No good. It's a decent title. You can imagine it being good. Yeah. It's probably where you should just stop. Because if you listen to it, you won't like it. 
no, I won't because it's him too young. It's him before he figured himself out. He's not fully formed. Was he the lead singer of that group, the Hassles? Uh, yes, but he's not the only singer. Okay. I think definitely lead. Yeah. Hey, did we do Elvis Presley Boulevard? Let me take a look at it. We're at the point now where you got to tell me what we haven't done. Yeah. I'm actually thinking I might do a little work and put a list together. I'd be forever in your debt. I don't think we have. Because also release date 2005? What? It was Presley Boulevard. It was a B-side. Oh. B-side on a 45. Well, let's do that for episode 100. I love it. Right. And let's also keep in mind, I'll tell you what my friend wants to do. Remember I mentioned a friend of mine who listens to our show yes. had an idea for what to do for our 100th. It doesn't yeah. happen for our 100th. He wanted to do an episode I don't want to do it right now, but I would not mind doing it. He had a good idea where he would host a trivia show. And I guess we play trivia against each other. Oh, well, interesting. That actually sounds kind of fun. It would be Billy Joel. Well, it'd be funny if it was no Billy Joel trivia. <laughs> uh, that and now fun. geography. <laughs> oh, no. It's just super hard. Yes. Oh, oh no. But he had that idea. The only thing is I just don't have the energy to think about putting it together just yet. But More than fair. Yeah, but I think that would be really fun. It's not like it'd be a lot of work. That's how little energy I have. Yeah, yeah. A little, uh, less work is better. Yeah, wait till I get back down to a 6-1. And then we'll... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm never going to get mine checked. I think that's the way to go.